Good evening, I'd like to call this Thursday, May 10th, meeting of the Tacoma School District Board of Directors to order. Please rise and join me for a flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would the general counsel please call the roll? President Cobb. Here. Vice President Vial. Here. Director Winskill. Here. Director Hines. Here. And is uh, Director Leon excused? Yes. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay, moving on to item four, adoption of the agenda. Is there a motion to adopt I the agenda? I move adoption. I'll well, second it. It's been moved and seconded. Are there any comments about the agenda? All those in favor of adopting the agenda signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion is adopted. Item five, recognition of staff, students, and community. 5.1, recognition of Wilson High School seniors, Danavia, oh, Danavia Holmes, and Nicholas Lay and their City of Destiny Awards in the Youth Service and Youth Leadership categories. Thank you, President Cobb and members of the board. Um, each year since 1987, the City of Tacoma honors adult and student volunteers for their contributions to the livability and betterment of Tacoma with City of Destiny Awards. For the last several years, the city's events and recognition committee has selected students from Wilson High School who have distinguished themselves for their community service, and this year is no exception. I'll give you some specifics about these two honorees in a moment. First, I would like to call both of them forward, Wilson High School seniors, Denavian Holmes and Nicholas Lay. So I'll, I'll share with you some excerpts from the award nominations. First, Denavian Holmes volunteers as a police explorer who has encountered the homeless and downtrodden during his service. He feels it is important to engage them in conversation at, that they have a need to be heard. On more than one occasion, Denavian has shared his lunch with a stranger. It's not typical for a young person to sit down with an unkempt homeless person and share a simple meal but this is a testament to Denavian's character. He comes from poverty himself and can identify with the plight of those he meets on the street. Denavian and his family make a point to serve meals at the Catholic Community Services Hospitality Kitchen and at Thanksgiving, particularly, Denavian witnessed the appreciativeness of those he served. As an ROTC cadet, Denavian has participated in many community service projects and was able to learn and grow through the grief of others. Denavian is a success story. His father deserted the family when he was young, leaving his mother to raise him and his siblings. There was plenty of opportunity to go down less successful pathways, but Denavian chose the high road of service to others. Please honor 2018 City of Destiny Award winner, Denavian Holmes. I'd like to start by thanking the board by uh, giving me this award. I wasn't expecting it, honestly, but I'm so happy to have it now. Uh, it's an honor. I'd like to also thank my mother and my great administrations as well as my ROTC instructor. They're all here. They're some of the biggest players in the things that I've accomplished in the last few years. Sorry about cutting off your applaud, but <laughs> without them, I don't think I'd be able to you know, be where I am now and be taking the steps that I'm taking in this next year or so. so. Thank you for everybody coming. <laughs> um, after high school, well, I've recently enlisted in the Marine Reserves, so I leave August 6th for boot camp, come back, at <laughs> come back in late January, and then off to college for me, there it is, you know? Thank you. They'll, they'll come up together. Our second honoree 
Nicholas Lay has been a fixture at Point Defiance Elementary School, spending countless hours reading to kindergarten and first graders, brightening the day for countless students. As an Eagle Scout, Nick spearheaded playground projects at Point Defiance. He helped construct a 24 foot by 24 foot chessboard, which was an incredible teaching tool that allowed second graders to increase their math skills. Nick procured all the materials at no cost from generous donations from Ace Hardware and Home Depot. Nick also volunteers at the Morgan Family YMCA and has made a positive impact on the lives of many young people through the Kids Night Out program. Leading by example, Nick continues to pay it forward through his efforts with the Fish Food Bank. As he delivers food boxes during the holiday season, he witnesses residences with multiple beds in one room, dilapidated homes, tattered dirty clothes. Despite this, he enters each residence with a cheerful smile and friendly greeting. He is rewarded with tears of joy and hugs and kisses from extremely grateful people. Nick's character and attitude is beyond reproach. He continually emulates the honesty, loyalty, ethics, and dedication he has for school and community service to all. Nick's passion for helping the less fortunate in our society is reflected by his Eagle Scout dedication, promoting honor, integrity, putting others first, love of country, and of course, his belief in God. And I'd be remiss not to note that Nick is the son of our very own Downing Elementary School principal, Olga Manos. <laughs> Please honor 2018 City of Destiny Award winner, Nicholas Lay. So uh, I'd like to first off thank the board for having me tonight and giving me this opportunity to receive this award. Thank you guys again. I would also like to thank my, my mom for being there and being the principal and always picking on me when I was a kid. <laughs> uh, I'd also like uh, to thank Ms. Ray and Mr. Bissett for being here and uh, like to th uh, like to wish Bissett the best in retirement and hope he has a great life after education. Thank you guys. <laughs> uh, and then uh, I'm also going to uh, Western, uh, Western University uh, uh, hoping to pursue a uh, business degree in somewhat shape or form. <laughs> Thank you. Once again, I just want to congratulate Denavian and Nicholas and wish you both the best in your next steps. Um, so moving on to number six, um, superintendent's report, and we have Pierce Transit here with us. Yes, uh, we'd like to have Al ask Alexandra Mather to come up. Uh, we have a great relationship and partnership with Pierce Transit and uh, work well. They often come to our CAB meetings and talk to us about what's going on. So it's a pleasure to have you here, Ex Alexandra, to talk about what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you so much. It is such an honor to be here and so hard to follow that <laughs> wonderful presentation. Those two young men are outstanding. Um, okay, so my name is Alexander Mather. I'm the Government and Community Relations Officer for Pierce Transit. And I come before you tonight to talk to you about Pierce Transit's biggest infrastructure project we've ever taken on, and that is the um, bus rapid transit line that will run from downtown Tacoma down to the Spanaway Walmart. So first I want to kind of frame for you guys what BRT, bus rapid transit, is. It's essentially light rail on wheels. So it allows it to be nimble so that it can um, run smoothly to, no matter where it is running. You know, there's different densities along the corridor and BRT allows us to, um, you know, build up the infrastructure so that it meets the demands of the area it's serving. So it's a really wonderful thing. So. Um, like light rail, um, only on wheels, and some characteristics of BRT is it has eight to 10 minute frequencies, uh, off-board fare collection, so it allows people to get on the bus, and then as they're leaving, they tap, or they get off the bus and tap their card, and then they move on, which allows the buses to have about 20 second dwell times. Um, it has level um, boarding, platforms so that people can get on really quickly with their bikes, their strollers, wheelchairs. Um, and the shelters are also characteristic of BRT. They are well lit and they have real-time signage. 
and they are a more welcoming area people like to sit and wait for the bus so we're really happy about that so this BRT corridor that's a picture of the whole corridor as you can see it starts up at South 9th Street in Tacoma goes around down market and then it will come in turn and go down through the dome district and the Tacoma Dome station one of the largest regional transit hubs in the Pacific Northwest and then it will come down as you can see down SR7 down to the Spanaway Walmart so this corridor this is the currently the route one and as we know the route one serves up to TCC but this part of the corridor experiences 3,500 boardings a day. So we know that it has robust ridership and it will serve a lot of people very well. These are the demographics of the corridor. I don't necessarily need to go through all those, but we just know that we're serving a great need along this corridor and that makes us feel very good and excited. Project timeline, in 2017, we launched our feasibility study, which we are still in right now. Um, we have held over 20 public meetings and listening sessions. Um, the next phase is we are going before our board with a locally preferred alternative, and I'll go over what that is. It's a very wonky planning term. Um, and then we will be going to the Federal Transit Administration this fall and submitting our Small Starts grant. The funding for the project, we have secured 15 million from uh, Connecting Washington in the 2015 transportation package, and we secured 60 million from the ST3 package. This project is one of Sound Transit's early deliverables in the ST3 package, so we're really excited to be leading the way on that front. Um, and then the whole project cost is 150 million, so we'll be going to the FTA for that remaining 75 million, and you know, we don't always know what's going on at the federal level these days, but we are hopeful that uh, we will be successful in securing that funds. And actually, I'm going to go back one. Oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so um, when we started this study, we looked at several different ways that we could address the corridor. And it's kind of dark, but the different options were the enhanced bus, BRT, streetcar and light rail we know that we wanted to see a project sooner than later so light rail as we know takes a while so we didn't go for that option the streetcar also very expensive we wanted to not be spending those um, that amount of money the the enhanced bus is good but it doesn't have the treatments that brt does and so um especially the traffic does or i'm sorry the bus doesn't really leave normal traffic and so it doesn't necessarily speed up the um, arrival times of the bus so that's why we landed on brt and we can see there that the range in cost per mile is four to 20 million which we have um, people have pointed that out and basically it just means whatever different treatments are along the corridor at a time it's a very nimble um, a nimble machine so you know some treatments will cost more than others so this is an intersection as is this is where the locally preferred alternative comes in this is there's two options there's the bat lanes which is this and then the median running lane so the bat lanes are business access transit lanes and what that does is it is for buses and for cars that are turning into a business or turning right so those vehicles by nature are slowing down so what it does is it takes those slower vehicles out of the main flow of traffic so that those general purpose lanes can continue to move at a speedy rate and then this is the median running lane option and the same it is um, primarily just bus in those lanes i do want to reiterate that none of the proposals we have take away any general purpose lanes and that's just kind of the slice of the different options. One of the things about the um, median running lane that people really like is its sense of permanence. Having that station in the middle of the road really establishes a presence there. And so um, we're hearing from a lot of our elected officials that that's the preference. So here is uh, the quarter. I'm going to have you look at the left, the left map. 
um, you can see there's areas that are blue and areas that are green. And the areas that are green are the areas that experience the most congestion right now. So if we aren't able to get our full funding from the FTA that we anticipate, those were the areas that would see the, um, the BRT enhancements first. But we will continue to build out the corridor as funding becomes available. And these are our partners. We have had a really robust engagement with all of our partners, which sometimes you can see that, you know, participation in the technical advisory kind of wanes off, but we're going strong. And another thing that we really love about this corridor is that it touches so many educational institutions, going from um, downtown where you have you know, University of Washington and Evergreen and Bates, um, and then you continue to go down, you have PLU, and then you have all the elementary, middle, and high schools along the corridor as well. And we know that we really appreciate our strong relationship with the Tacoma School Board and the Orca Pass program that we share. And we just really look forward to a strong partnership with that. And that is what I have for you. <laughs> Do you Thank have any questions? Thank, Thank you. you. Are there questions from the board? Director Winskill? Well, I just want to say that I am a frequenter of Pierce Transit and um, the um, people who work, uh, who drive the buses are so friendly and so nice, and a lot of good customer service there. And um, I've always been pl uh, pleased. <laughs> I know all the routes. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful, thank you. Yeah. I'll pass that along. They are wonderful. Any other comments? Well, we just thank you for the update and for keeping us in the loop with what's going on and how the planning is progressing and look forward to what was the date? 2022 or 2022? 2022. 2022. <laughs> we look forward to 2022. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Eight to ten minutes. That's good. Okay. So we will move on to item number seven on our agenda, members of the public wishing to address the board. So school board members encourage public participation. Your input's appreciated. If you'd like to address the school board, please follow these steps. First, complete a citizen's request to speak card, which is located at the back of the auditorium. Submit the card to the school board secretary prior to the start of the meeting. Cards submitted after the public comment period has ended will not be considered at this session. The superintendent will call your name when it's your turn to address the board. Please speak into the microphone and you'll have up to three minutes to share your comments and you'll get a one minute, uh, a ding will go off when you have one minute left. First speaker is Jessica Brixick from Next Move Internship. That will be followed by Aaron Wilson. Good evening, can you hear me? Okay, <laughs> good evening everyone. My name is Jessica Brixey. I am a senior at Stadium High School and I'm here on the behalf of Next Move Internship Program. Um, I've been fortunate enough to participate in the program for the past two years of my high school experience. And um, last year I was able to work with Catholic Community Services in their fund development department and help facilitate their um, annual auction where we were able to raise a lot of money for their cause and it was an amazing experience and actually that connection also led me to this year's internships where um, I have been working with Washington Lifestyle Homes and they have actually offered me a position there after um, graduation so I do have a job over the summer and for the next year as I attend TCC um, so I just would love to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for this program. Um, I really, really appreciate it. And I know that a lot of other students in the Tacoma School District really appreciate it as well. It's an amazing experience and it's something that I wouldn't trade ever. Um, it, I know this sounds very sappy and very forged, but I always I always encourage this program on anyone that I speak to because it has been such a learning experience for me and I've grown so much morally, um, professionally. I had no idea what the professional world was going to be until I walked into it and I would not have known until I got out of college if I hadn't had this experience. So I just wanted to come and thank you guys and yeah, I just really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Aaron Wilson, followed by Amy, I'm going to try it, Amy, Pesanowski. Pesanowski. Ready to go up there. 
there. Sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, thank you, board, for letting me speak. I'm Aaron Wilson. I work at Bryant Montessori, and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, uh, who let the ra rodeo clown in to speak? Or you're questioning my fashion choices? And I don't, I'll give you that. Uh, I'm kind of thrown off, actually, because Denavian, who was here earlier, is a product of Bryant, and I'm very proud to see him get that award. Thankfully, we got uh, some footage for him. And there's some Bryant teachers back there who are very proud of him. He was not my student, so I can't brag about him personally. Uh, I've done a lot of things in my life. I came to teaching later in life. I stayed away from it because I had uh, teacher, teachers in my family who always said, oh, complained about the bureaucracy and the hassles and the paperwork and the lack of respect and so forth. So when I graduated in 1992 out of UWT Tacoma, I went into the private sector. And so I've done almost everything you can think of. I've been, you know, I've come home with fish guts in my hair. I've overhauled fish processing machines. I've been a community information coordinator for a company that when they went public on the stock market, started the tech bubble uh, crash of the late 90s. That was my company, worldpages.com. You don't remember them. Anyway, I've done car sales, I've done advertising sales, I've done it all. And I gotta tell you, I've done accounting, you know, all that sort of stuff. I've never been in a job where you're required to be so on all the time. It, uh, it's a very unique situation when you're a teacher. And I love my job. I'm really not here to complain about anything. I'm really here to tell you that thank you. I love working for Tacoma Public Schools. But I really am here on behalf of my fellow teachers, especially the career people who have been here for 20 years of their lives, 30 years of their lives. And I'm amazed at how they could do that because honestly, it's a stressful job. And I'm a loyal person. I've been married for 25 years. The company I love to work for the most was, I worked for it for about 11 years. And I, if I like what I'm doing and I feel like I'm respected doing it, and I feel like I'm a valued person, I stay there. And I'm sure that's true for a lot of people. But I was talking, I, I talked to teachers who are younger than me, and I was just talking to one uh, today at the end of the school day, and I asked her if she's coming back next year. And she doesn't know. She hears about other districts paying more. She doesn't know. There's other issues, too, I'm sure, involved. But, you know, I see young people who are half my age, practically. I'm 49. And uh, they're already burnt out. And it's a tough job. It really is. I love it. I think every day I, I do it. Seeing kids like Danavian, that's what you do it for. And I've learned from all these teachers here. So your time. Yeah, I, I heard okay. the buzzer. Um, and I want to tell you that they deserve a raise. And I, what I think you're going to do, and I think you know this, so is you're going to give them a substantial that. raise this year. And I know there's the, so the deal making. Sir, I'm sorry. I have to hold you to your time. Oh, sure. Sorry. Was that it? Yeah, that was it. OK, sorry. I thought that was the buzzer for the minute. Sorry. No, thank, thank you. you. Amy, followed by Michael Michal. Hi, uh, my name is Amy Pesanowski. Um, I live in the Bose area um, on the east side of Tacoma. And I'm here because I was asked recently to be on the design advisory committee for Bose. And we've had one meeting, and with one meeting, I have a major concern. We were told that in the DAC that we could not um, bring our feedback um, on certain issues to the next meeting. So you only have your one hour to talk, uh, one hour to give feedback about only what they're discussing that day. You can't bring it back. So my major concern is safety um, on the east side. Um, especially in regards to L Street, the school, um, what was submitted, and there's a map, um, they're talking about putting a s couple streets through and changing where the entrances go. Um, we have no sidewalks in our area. Um, our area, we have such a speeding problem. Um, I've been on the East Side Council before. We'd put in speed bumps through innovative grants. And still doesn't 
fix the problem. Um, where the proposed new entrance or exit would be off 68th and L, um, currently there's ecology blocks there. Mm -hmm. And they have been hit by head-on collisions so many times. And each time, it's a battle getting them moved. Um, so my concern is this is going to be somebody. I mean, a big, you know, it's just a safety concern. Um, there's also in that area, there's an unmarked alley that um, somebody uh, had, somebody told my car coming out of it um, onto L Street. Um, there's no sight lines, and I've worked with the city, and there's not enough accidents for them to do anything about it. They won't put signages up. Um, Catherine Ushka has been down there with me. She's seen how bad it is, and she has sent emails, but nothing happens. Um, and I guess my last thing would be um, concern of coordination with the city and the school district working together to get what needs to happen um, at the school. Uh, prior, our road is being paved right now on L Street, and we had asked the city to not pave the road until we knew what the school district's plans are so roads aren't being torn up you know, a year and a half later. And it's going to be paved tomorrow. Uh, so a big concern on just kind of everybody working together to get this uh, school done as safely as we can. So thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Michael, followed by Heather Moreno. Hi there. I'm, I'm Mike Rafalt. I'm batting cleanup for Amy. I uh, live in the Hope Heights neighborhood, just adjacent to the Bose neighborhood. Uh, approximately half of our uh, neighborhood goes to Bose. Uh, so I'm concerned more on the 64th Avenue, uh, 64th Street side. Uh, 64th Street is going to be redone ap approximately at the same time that Bose is going to be rebuilt. Th those are going on at the same time. Currently, 64th is just a uh, car death trap. Uh, but I'm afraid that after it's paved, it's going to double the traffic going down that road. And I'm, I'm just concerned that the school board, that the schools and the city aren't talking. Uh, since you're both going to be building at the same time, you know, a little coordination would go a lot of way, a long way into making, uh, making it safer for the students. Right now, the crosswalk across 64th isn't really located in the proper place. And with how they're talking about rerouting traffic, it's going to be even worse. Uh, for the kids trying to, trying to get back to their homes. Uh, so I had those concerns. I uh, just wanted to say we're really excited that Bose is going to finally get torn down and rebuilt. It's way, way past due. Uh, and, and the plans are looking really great, and we're very excited about it. Uh, you know, there's a few, uh, a few concerns. Our community garden's probably going to have to be relocated. Uh, the school boards, the school, the planners are talking about moving our community garden into the school grounds. Uh, might be a little complicated, but we're, we're more than willing to, to work with the school board on that and, uh, and move our community garden into the school grounds as well as our little free library that, uh, that the Bose neighborhood has done. Uh, like I said, I'm just batting clean, clean up for Amy today, and I just want to thank the, thank the board for their service and uh, conclude my comments. Thank you. Madam President, yes, Dr. Um, Hines. Superintendent Santorno, would it be possible to get uh, maybe in a Friday report a synopsis of what's occurring uh, communication-wise between the district and the city so we can better understand? Uh, I'm encouraged to hear that, uh, well, now council member, mm -hmm. formerly Director Ushka, has been out there. I would think she would help us with uh, to ensure that we're adequately communicating on the project, but just to make certain that we are in communication, if there's traffic issues on the 64th street side and the 68th street side we want to coordinate and de-conflict so we're not creating undue problem and undue cost i'll look into it All right, thank you thank you, thank you. director Vial. <clears throat> having worked at bose elementary a number of times over the last few years 64th has been a bad street for a number of years as has 68th and i think the faster we get on that with the design making sure that safety um, pulling out of the street onto 64th from where Bose is now is is really a, an adventure and so um, 
and I agree with that crosswalk. I don't know why that was put there. It doesn't make sense. So um, I think those traffic, Chris, if you could get a, with, I know that you're probably working on that, but make sure that we are coordinating and superintendent with all of the traffic alignment. And sometimes we don't, they do things without talking to us and if we can get on that because that school is located in an area where you've got two major streets and they're narrow and people don't want to go 72nd or 56th so they come and go from McKinley down to uh, Pacific on mm -hmm. that street and shortcut and we have kids crossing that street all the way up and down so it is a real safety hazard I can personally attest to it having done crossing guard duty out there a couple times Chris, yes. Chris. We, we can definitely provide information and file the report I will tell you that our consultant on the Bose uh, elementary sure. project has a standing meeting every Friday with the city so coordination is, is pretty strong and thorough Super. but I can pro provide Good. additional information tomorrow thank okay. you Okay, we'll resume public comment. <laughs> Heather? All right, hello, my name is Heather Moreno, and I appreciate this conversation about safety. I feel like I do represent the most vulnerable students in our, in our schools, right, the special ed students. And um, so I'm speaking about um, compensation and teacher retention, because I, am, like my fellow students here, I am passionate, I love my job, I just want to be able to afford a living, right? I have um, a small house on the east side that I'm like, what am I going to do this summer to try to make some extra money to keep, you know, to keep my house? So, um, and I'm also very concerned um, about um, my paraeducators. So we have some amazing people working for us, and um, I have one who just became a single mom, and now she's like doing this alone with a para salary. And I did a quick um, research. Um, uh, it was Indeed.com brought me um, t teacher salaries in Federal Way versus um, Tacoma. And they were $3 more in Federal Way. And our, um, our building at Northeast Tacoma is you know, right by Federal Way. So it's like I want to retain these amazing, passionate people who work with our most vulnerable students. So um, that's my plea is to, to make sure that our money goes to our educators, because we are at the ground level working with, you know, working with the students. So, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. so that, that concludes our public comment for the evening. So, we will move on to item number eight, consent agenda. Is there a motion to adopt uh, the I move adoption. Agenda? Second. Any questions about items on the consent agenda? <coughs> All those in favor of adoption signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion is adopted. Moving on to item nine, policy matters. There are none tonight. Item 10, quarterly financial update. Presentations on the financial health of the district will be made during regular board meetings on a quarterly basis. Monthly financial statements can be found on the district website at tacomaschools.org, then to about, and then on to finance. Item 11, curriculum and instruction. There are no curriculum and instruction matters tonight. Item 12, business matters. 12.1, approval of contract for district furniture, fixtures, and equipment. The chief operating officer recommends that the board of directors approve the superintendent to negotiate and award a contract for securing the purchase of furniture, fixtures, and equipment from McDowell Craig as needed. I move approval. Second. Are there any questions or comments about this item? I, I just appreciate this approach, especially when you look at the cost savings and on the furniture up to 50%. Um, when we know that we've got uh, capital budget issues uh, and every dollar counts, thank you for scrutinizing the budget and bringing us forward more competitive bids. Sometimes when we do this, it was often attributed to Albert Einstein doing the same thing over and over and expecting different <laughs> results is the definition of insanity. And we had for so long taken that approach with these sorts of purchasing items and with all the schools yet to be built. Um, I'm interested to see the cost savings that we'll be able to obtain. So thank you for putting this before us this evening. Any other comments? All those in favor of adopting the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any <coughs> opposed? Motion is adopted. Item 13, other business matters. There are none tonight. Item 14, report to the board. There are no reports to the board tonight. Item 15, individual board comments or reports. Director Vial. Thank you. Um, 
on uh, Tuesday night, had the opportunity, to, uh, along with Director Rinsko, was there and Superintendent Santorno, uh, to attend the pass and review at Sunset. That uh, has been a for 21 years that went on in our school district at Stadium with all of our junior ROTC units and many from outside the district. And then last year, there was a change in command at Stadium and we didn't do it. And I mentioned to John Page, our director of CTE, who had J um, ROTC put under him along about last February and said, you know, we really need to do that again. He said, yeah, we do. And he talked to Colonel Neely, who runs the Marine uh, detachment, JRTC, at uh, Wilson, and Colonel Neely stepped up and said, yeah, we'll do it. So on very, very short notice, they were able to put that together, and they got the uh, band from, uh, i -Corps band came from Fort Lewis. We had all of our units. We only had one outside unit this year from Bethel, and that was because of the calendar scheduling and people not having on it the first of the year. But that um, ROTC is a great program for a lot of our kids, and one of the highlights was um, Colonel Neely honored one of the uh, retired uh, colonels, uh, uh, U.S. Marine Corps pilot, Colonel Swally, who had uh, flown uh, uh, Hellcats in the battles of Iwo Jima and Okinawa for his service during World War II, and he presented him with a flag that had flown on Mount Suribachi, who was the infamous flag that was at Iwo Jima erected by the Marine Corps after one of the bloodiest battles in U.S. history. And then also he gave him a letter thanking him for his amazing service and outstanding service from none other than the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Um, so anyway, great um, work on their part. Yesterday, <coughs> Superintendent Tentor and I were both there. Degrees of Change, which is now the renaming of the um, National Leadership Foundation program was a um, the Act 6 program, a great fundraiser, and they're talking about a new program in which they're going to pilot to have more kids get involved that will be with TCC, a connection between start at TCC, follow them through the University of Washington Tacoma. So I'm looking forward to seeing what, uh, how that comes out. So those were some two really positive kind of fun things to do this week. Dr. Winsfield? Yeah. So last Saturday, I read in the paper that the, um, Lincoln was doing a play. So um, I went. It was um, Sister Act. It was mm -hmm. very, very good. Um, very enjoyable. And um, different than what I expected. It brought me back to my Catholic education. <laughs> it's all those nuns <laughs> jump, jumping around the stage. Um, uh, then I have um, kind of a request to look at something. So I, I went to Truman today. And many of the teachers told me that their smart boards were not working. Mm -hmm. Now, I think that what's happened is that they're discontinued and we can't find parts. Mm -hmm. But I would really like to know what is the, uh, going forward, what we're going to do to replace them and what's the plan. I told them we had a, a plan for um, technology, but I don't really know what's in the plan uh, relating to smart boards. So I'll to hear about that yeah. later I'll would be good, that. yeah. And that some of them have been without them for months, so. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Director Hines? No reports this evening. Student board member O'Halloran, do you have a report um, tonight? No, nothing to report. Okay. And I don't have anything to report either. Um, so we will move on to item 16, announcement of future board meetings. So the board will meet on Thursday, May 17th at 6 p.m. for a study session. And I believe the focus is on the it's still to be determined. Safety update. Okay, we, that's, we, that's what I thought, but I wanted to <laughs> confirm. We will meet for a study session for a safety update. And Thursday, May 24th, 2018, we will meet at 6 p.m. for our regular business meeting. So we will move on to item 17, and we do have an executive session tonight. The board will meet an executive session for about 20 minutes to review le with legal counsel. Chief Financial Officer and the Director of Purchasing Contract Performance of a publicly bid contract because public knowledge of such consideration would likely cause increased costs. So with that, we will break to executive session.